Hey there, IO Live. Todd Kerbelman here, and I am here with Jen Tong, who is apparently using the power of the cloud to like find new planets. No big deal, you know. Yeah, why not? Sure. So, Jen, what is going on here at this at this booth? So behind us, we see Project Panoptes, which is an open source project that includes open source hardware that is composed entirely of commercial off-the-shelf components. And it is intended to be low cost enough for educational institutions and hobby astronomers to build these robotic telescopes and contribute to the project. And so what happens once they build these robotic telescopes? How, how are they discovering stars, or planets, I should say? So the way they discover planets around other stars is by combining their efforts uh, using the cloud. So what happens is each night the telescopes will all wake up and look at the sky. And they'll get a bunch of great images of the sky. And then when the day comes, they'll go to sleep, but not really. They're going to start uploading all of their data to the cloud platform. And from there, we can combine all the data together, aggregate it, and then from that, we can infer the existence of planets around other stars. And how do you infer the existence of planets? So planets are very hard to see directly because their stars are very bright and there's lots of glare and they're very far away. In fact, a star only looks like one pixel uh, on the camera. So we have to use some trickery to do that. So instead of looking for the planet directly, we look for a dimming of the star when the planet moves between us and the star, kind of like an eclipse, or we call it a transit in a more general case. And so, so the general idea is you've got hundreds of telescopes all around the world taking pictures of the night sky. They combine all those images up to Google Cloud, which analyzes them all and looks for a star that dims on a regular enough basis that you think it must be because there's a planet passing in front of it. That is exactly correct. So we're able to infer that just by having a whole bunch of samples from having a very large fleet of telescopes. Wow, that's very interesting. Now, um, if I remember from being three years old, stars do twinkle. How can you tell that a star is dimming because of a planet passing in front of it versus like, you know, normal star twinkling, which is totally a, uh, a technical term? Totally technical. And uh, that's a great question because that's some part of the stuff that makes Panoptes special. Because we're using commercial off-the-shelf cameras instead of specialized astronomy sensors, we have to compensate for the fact that those cameras are designed to take color photos. Because when a camera takes color photos, it filters some of the light out using this thing called a Bayer filter. And when the star twinkles, it moves around that Bayer filter, and it makes it much harder to count the number of photons, because we don't know how much are getting filtered out by the Bayer filter. So the way we compensate for that is we look for another star in the same picture that has the exact same amount of twinkle. And from that, we can do a relative brightness measurement, because we know how bright those stars should be, because we can identify the star. And that's how we kind of cancel out the twinkle. And I'm contractually obligated to ask, what awesome Google Cloud Platform features are you using to power Project Panoptes? Yeah, Panoptes definitely kind of illustrates that boring uses of the cloud can, can enable really cool stuff. So we are using some simple stuff. We're using uh, some of the simple security controls. We're putting a uh, service account on each one of the devices so we can control access to a specific telescope, can access a specific part of our storage buckets. And then we're using Google Cloud Storage to store all of that data. And then we're aggregating it on Google Compute Engine. And so the general idea is anybody can get involved. They can build their own telescope. And they can be part of this project. And then if they find a star, they can name it after themselves. Is that, is that basically it? Well, naming stars is a more complicated issue. Uh, and individual Panoptes telescopes don't actually discover a star themselves. It's kind of like a, a team that, that collaboratively accomplishes a goal. But yeah, anybody can get involved. We especially like to work with hobbyist astronomers and educational institutions because we, we want to kind of inspire a love astronomy in, in the youth around the world. That's good. And how would I get started if I wanted to? So I encourage you to go check out projectpanoptes.org. All right, so you heard it here. Go to projectpanoptes.org, and you too can name a star after you. Jen totally promised that you can do that. I'm here with Sarah Robinson. Sarah, what is this that we're looking at here? We are looking at a demo of our cloud machine learning APIs, um, specifically highlighting our video API, speech API, and translation API. So what these let you do is they let you access a pre-trained machine learning model with a single REST API request. So you don't need to know anything about how machine learning works to use them. Awesome, and what is this game that we have set up? So we're going to see how we compare to our video API. Should we take a look? You mean like me against a computer? You against our, our pre-trained model. All right, well, let's see how it goes. Are you up for the challenge? I think so. What are we going to do in this game? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to play a video, and I'm going to have you try to annotate the video as it's going. 
And then when it's done, we'll compare the annotations you came up with with our video API. All right, let's, uh, I'm feeling confident. Let's see if I can beat this computer. All right, All right here we go. All right. So let's take a look at this video and we're going to play against the APIs. We're going to play against the video API. So when I hit play, type what you see. She's she's still lost. Wait, no, now she has Google Trips. Okay, so we, we can skip to the end of the video. But wait, uh-oh. We won't play the whole thing, but uh, we saw about half of the video, so we can see that you found 13 items. Video API found 89 items. But it was a valiant effort. Once again, beaten by a machine. Do you want to take a look at the API response in a little bit more detail? Yeah, let's take a look at what we got here. Okay, so this is everything that the video API found. Um, so we can actually skip to the points in the video where it found these things. Um, and then if we want to look at the JSON response from the API, we can do that here. So we can see all of the different entities it picked up in the video. Um, and we can also um, take a look at what the speech API transcribed from this video. So this is an entire transcription of the audio from that video using our speech to text API. Um, and we can even use this to skip to various points in the video. Um, and then finally, I'll show our translation API. So let's say you're a user somewhere else in the world and you want to translate a video into your own language. You can go over here and we can try it out in French, for example. You can also translate the video API entities there. Um, so that's an overview of our machine learning API demo. Hey, did you like this video? Want to see more like it? Head on over to g.co slash io slash guide to see all of our io guide videos. Come on, let's go.